сердца Praise God, praise God. Sit down, please. Amen. Praise God. I want to just uh, teach you for a few minutes. And uh, this week uh, and uh, Sunday, I'm doing uh, a teaching of glory. So I just want to prepare you for those teachings. Amen. When, uh, no, after the resurrection, there's glory. Jesus had a glorious body. Amen. The body, the, the body that uh, you can lock him up somewhere, he will just disappear. Amen? So from this month, from Sunday, next week, during the week, I'll be talking about uh, uh, different aspects of the glory of God. Amen? And I want you to begin to experience the glory of God. Amen? Amen? We are supernatural beings living in the natural world. And I want you to begin to experience supernatural, supernatural, you know, a life. Amen? Do you know that one day the disciples were in one room? They were praying. They were afraid. That was after they had arrested Jesus Christ, after the, the, the burial and uh, the resurrection. Amen. Can you just raise, they should raise my microphone a little bit. Amen. And also for the singer. The, the singer is low. Amen. So they were afraid. Jesus Christ was in the room. Amen. He just appeared. They appear With a glorious body. Amen. The doors were locked. He just appeared. So, so uh, soon after the resurrection, so many glorious things took place. And the Bible even says that uh, uh, after his resurrection, all saints who died before, amen, they came back to life. Because uh, in the book of, uh, of uh, uh, Ephesians chapter 4, Ephesians chapter 4, can you, can you just, uh, who is reading the Bible for me today? For verse, uh, verse 9. Can we go to verse 9? Ephesians chapter 4, verse 9. Do we have a good reader here who can read the Bible? All of you are not. Ah, all of you don't, 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 don't read the Bible. Huh? Can someone read? Stand, stand up, New King James. Okay, they have already put here. Thank God. The Bible, because you know, when someone is reading, we, 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 we save time. Now, now this he ascended. What does it mean? But that he also faced the celestial. Just put on the skin, don't remove it. Now he ascended. So what happened when he rose from the dead? Okay, when he died on the cross, he went to heaven in the spirit. Amen? And the Bible said he went to do some other spiritual stuff. I don't have time to teach you about that. So his spirit went to heaven. After, after reporting to the Father in heaven, he came down, then that's why it says he he, uh, he ascended. What does it mean that uh, that he also first descended? So he went to the lower parts, and here it says into lower parts of the earth. Okay, he went to 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 to, to the place of the dead. He went to the Hades. Say Hades. Hades. Now, because that time when all saints died, all the saints in the Old Testament, when they die, they were not going to heaven. They were going to the place of the dead. It's like a cell, a holding cell. Are you following me? Amen. Because uh, when a man sinned against God, what happened? The devil went to God. The devil said, I know that I'm going to hell. I know that I'm a sinner. And uh, hell is my place. But the devil said to God, but you are a just God. You are a righteous God. Your man has also sinned. So because he has sinned, your man is going to hell with me. So he had legalized, he claimed the souls of men, even though they were righteous. But all of them, the devil put them in a holding cell. Say holding cell. Holding cell. When you kill someone, you don't go straight to prison. Because you are not sentenced. 
but you are kept in a holding cell in case you may run away. So they keep you in a cell, and then you'll be going for trial. If you are, if you are favored, if you are lucky, you get a pearl. You understand? Amen. But you are in a holding cell. You, you are not in prison. So these, these ones, so the devil said, you are go, you are, you, you, I'll keep them in a cell because they have sinned against you. Amen? Amen. Why? Because the price for sin was not yet paid. Amen? Amen. Now, when he died on the cross, he, he paid the price. Ah, say so he, he paid the price. He redeemed me. He redeemed me. The word redeemed means to, 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 to buy you back. Amen? Amen. So, like, like, you know, you, you were taken, we were, we were slaves because of our sins, but he bought us back. Amen. So he redeemed us. Yes. So when he went down, he went to announce to the spirit world. If you have read my, my, my book, I put that hell is underneath. Under the ocean, that's where there is hell. Amen? Amen. So he went down and he, some, some translations, they say that he, he preached. He preached to them. We didn't preach to them. He went to proclaim, to announce that I have paid the price, so they must they are, they, they are not supposed to be there. So the Bible says that uh, because the devil was having the keys of that place, in the book of Revelation, that he took the keys and he opened. So he began to call names. David, yes, sir, you are free. Abraham, yes, sir, you are free. He paid the price. Ah. If this doesn't excite you, you have a problem. Amen? Because Amen. you are not wasting time when you are believing in Jesus Christ. Amen. So he said, oh, you guys, all the saints, all the saints, apart only from, 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 uh, from Elijah and, and Enoch, Enoch went to heaven alive. Amen? Amen? But they must come back because the Bible says it is appointed unto men once to what? To die. And they didn't die. That's why the Bible said two prophets will come again. It's Elijah and who? Enoch. And you find them in the book of Revelation. They will be killed and they will put their bodies in the streets for three, for three days. Amen? And after that, because they will be rejoicing that all oh, these prophets, they tormented the world. I'm talking about the time of the Antichrist. Amen? So the Elijah will come again. Enoch will come again. They will die. After three days, they will be resurrected. Amen. And they will go to heaven alive. To fulfill the scripture that it is appointed unto men once to die. And after that, the judgment. Uh, am I talking to someone? Amen. Now, for you who are, who are alive, when Jesus Christ comes, you will die for a second. <laughs> you die for how many minutes? Second. Amen. When he appears, the Bible says that in the twinkling of an eye, our bodies shall be changed. Amen. So you will die for a second. For your body to be transformed. Amen. And you have a new body that will never see death again. Amen. 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 That's the power of the gospel. The problem in the church is that we don't teach these things. And people just say, hey, I'm going to heaven. Hey, I'm born again. And by the way, when you receive Jesus Christ, when Jesus Christ comes, you don't go to heaven forever. No, heaven it belongs to God. You've been in heaven for how many years? Seven years. For the marriage supper of the Lamb. Amen? Amen. So, when we are raptured, we we'll go to heaven. We've we'll been in heaven for how many years? Seven years. Seven years. And then we'll come back on this earth. Amen? Amen. To reign with Christ. Jesus Christ will establish 1,000 years of peace in Jerusalem. Amen. That's why the devil hates Jerusalem. This hatred of Israel is not normal. It's satanic. Because, like now, people are talking about uh, people who are dying in Gaza. But do you know what they did? How they raped women? How they killed people? people are not talking, and they are still holding the hostages. It's just a hatred. And this hatred you, you see. Can you, can you go and bring the, the, the books that I've, I've just brought? The, the, the new printing. No, everyone must read my book, I'm telling you. But the problem with Africans, Africans don't want to read. They want anointing oil. 
Huh? <laughs> I don't think God will bless you now, but the books is for future, for knowledge. I don't like to use this phrase when a white man says, if you want to hide the things from black people, put them in the book. Most black people don't know to read. Amen? Amen? When I'm flying, I fly a lot, and when I'm flying long distance, even a short distance, I check. You find that most white people they have a book, are reading a book. Black people are watching a Nigerian movie, or they are eating. <laughs> <laughs> Say, I'm delivered from that. Say, I'm going to be reading. Amen. Amen. Ha, wherever I take my oil or my oil, I took my oil to Gabon. I was in Gabon. Within 30 minutes, oil was finished. But my books, I bring them without anyone buying a book. Amen. Amen. So what Jesus did, he said, guys, I've paid the price. I'm going with you to heaven. Amen. Amen. So the Bible says, you can read that in, uh, can you put maybe just because I've already said this, I, I like to back everything with the, with the scripture. Matthew 27, verse 53. Matthew 27, verse 53. I want to just show you that. Amen? Put it on the screen. Matthew 27, verse 53. Amen. Are you getting this? Amen. Once you understand the truth, eh, the Bible says, verse 53, Okay? Okay, just let's begin from verse 52 that you understand. The Bible says that after the earthquake, you know, when he was going down, there was an earthquake. Amen? Because the boss went down. Say the boss went down. Oh, yeah. Ah, creation was worshipping him. Go to verse, go, go start from verse 50, I think. For us to understand, verse 50. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice. And yielded up his spirit. Verse 51. Then behold the veil of the temple. Was torn in two from top to the bottom. And the earthquake. And the rocks were split. Hey. When he was going down. Stones were worshipping. He said hey. The boss of, of heaven and the earth. The creator is coming. He's here. That's why there was an earthquake. Amen. Say, Jesus is a big, big boss. Jesus is a big, big boss. Amen? Amen? So, on his way down, now, verse 52. And the graves were opened. Which graves? The graves of David, the graves of Abraham, the graves of Noah, all the saints. And many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. Amen? Verse 53. And coming out of the graves after his what? Resurrection. They went into the holy city and appeared to many. Imagine your grain. Imagine your sister who died a long time ago. He shows, she shows up and says, I am, uh, I am here because uh, he paid the price. And he, he, comes, he, he, he comes to your township and just say, no, we're just here to say hi, and, but we're, we're not staying here because he paid the price. Because what he did that time, he transferred paradise. Paradise was underground, so Jesus took paradise, he took it where? To heaven. Ah, are you getting this? Yes. So all the saints, they followed him with glorious bodies. Amen? Amen? Now, for you, for you and me who are still alive, when he comes, the Bible says that a trumpet shall sound, and when this trumpet sounds, we shall be changed. That's why I said you will die for seconds. In the twinkling of an eye, just, just like this. How, how many seconds? Just one second. So you have a, you have a glorious body. Amen? Amen? This is a body that will go to heaven with him and will also come back with him to establish 1,000 years of peace. I encourage you all they say, oh, 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 you need to read this book. You must get this book. Amen? It's about 300 pages. That's why it's expensive, 250. But what is 250 with the knowledge that you have you get in this book? Someone, I'm, I'm sure someone said to me, are you a human being? I said, I'm a human being. He said, it's, it's someone who, can, who is not normal or who is spiritual who can write this book. Because what I put in this book, they are powerful things. 
must get your kobe and eat. Amen? Amen. So, I have put that this month is a month of glory because uh, after resurrection, those things happen. So, he went to heaven. When all the saints went to heaven. Now, what happens when you die? Okay? We're talking about when you, when he comes, you find your life. You, you, you'll be changing the what? The twinkle of an eye. Now, those who die now, the saints, okay? What happens? Every human being, can you stand? Uh, let me just give you an example. Okay? What's your name? Michael. You see Michael? You see Michael here? Michael has a twin brother. Identical twin. This one is one we see now. There's another one, a spirit man. We don't see him. Amen? Amen. So now, when Michael dies, yeah, and, the, and, the, and by the way, children of God, when a saint dies, we, de, we, we don't say we have lost Michael. We, 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 we will never lose Michael. Amen? Michael has just graduated to what? To glory. So, the twin brother of Michael that we don't see. Amen? When he dies, he will leave this body. He goes to heaven. Not underground, not to the cell. A holding cell. Are you following me? So when your sister who is born again or your brother dies, she goes straight to heaven. The twin brother goes or twin sister goes to where? Now, the twin, this is the twin flesh. It's what we bury. Are you following me? Amen. Now, when the trumpet sounds, eh, the Bible said the power of God will go to the grave. Amen? Amen. And they are the ones who will be resurrected first before we are transformed. So, the power of God will hit whether you were buried in Soweto or you'll be buried where. Where you are buried doesn't matter. It's us, it's, it's, it's you who is alive or your family. Says, okay, we want to, want to honor our person. But whether you disappear in a, in, in, in a sea, the power of God will go there, will pick your body. Amen? Amen. And your body will be united with the, the twin brother. Amen? Amen? And you shall be resurrected to meet the Lord in the air. Before we are changed, God will touch them first. That's why David said that my body shall not see corruption. I will not be in the grave forever. Because the head rose from the dead. In Colossians chapter 1 verse 18, can you give me the Colossians 1 verse 18? No, I missed this because I didn't have the, the Passover service. Just go to verse, Colossians 1 verse 18. The Bible says, and he is the head of the body. Who is the head of the body? He there is, 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 is capital H. He is the head of the body. Who is that? Jesus. And who is the body? The church. Amen. Amen? He is the head of the body, the church. Who is the beginning? The firstborn from the dead. Say the firstborn from, from the dead. Amen? That in all things he may have the preeminence. Now, the resurrection is compared to birth. Amen? He's the firstborn from the birth, from the dead. So the resurrection is compared to birth. And in any normal birth, what begins to come out is a head. And when the head comes out, you know that the body is going to follow. So because the head rose from the dead, you will not remain in the grave forever. You shall follow the body and the head. You shall be resurrected. That's our blessed hope for us who believe in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So, I've called this month a month of what? Glory. Glory as things must happen to you. Amen. That was just, by the way, it was not the message of today. I will just read these verses and then we are done. Amen. Amen. Let's go to the book of, uh, you know, I've been teaching about trees, the prophetic trees. This is Revelation. You know, just boiling in my spirit. Go to Matthew, uh, Genesis 21, verse 33. Genesis 21, verse 33. I want everyone, if you have never planted a tree, you must plant a tree. Amen? Amen. You must plant a tree. 
Because who started the branding a tree? It's our father Abraham. Maybe just to give you a, a, a before we read the background. Okay? Whatever happened in our life, sin began from the tree. Amen? Yeah. And Jesus, for Jesus to redeem man, he died where? Yeah. On a tree. Amen? Amen? Jesus said, oh, because you tree, you are the one who caused problem. Now for me to redeem man, I also die on a tree. Amen? Amen. And you know, prophetic ministry is a, is a ministry of mysteries. The ministry of what? <laughs> mysteries. Amen? Amen? And I pray that because you are prophetic people, your eyes should open and your ears should understand Amen. prophetic stuff. Because some people, <laughs> they don't understand prophetic things. Amen? Amen? And what we do here, some people, they question, but whatever I do here, I give you the scriptures. Amen? Amen. Now, go to Genesis 21, verse 33. Genesis 21, verse 33. The Bible says, Abraham planted a tamarisk tree where? Beresheba. And there he called on the name of the Lord, the everlasting God. Amen? He planted what? The father of faith. The father of those who believe. He planted a tree. You must plant a tree. I have, a tr I have trees in my place. Amen? We have a tree here. In the church, we, we, there's a tree. Amen? Oh my God. Do you know that trees talk? Do you know that trees speak? It's in your Bible in the book of Judges. That the trees were talking, one tree was talking to another group of trees that you should be our king. Trees speak. And the Bible says that trees clap their hands. Animals talk. Creation speak. Am I talking to someone here? A donkey spoke. Amen? Now, that donkey had been speaking to other donkeys, but this one was special because he spoke to a human being. And this stupid prophet was answering, exchanging words. <laughs> Amen? Do you know that dogs talk? They have their own language. Amen? So me, I speak to a tree. I said, you tree, go and squeeze the wicked. Amen? Let me give you the verses so that you understand. Amen? So Abraham planted what? A tree. And I want you to mark the tree. Put it again. What's the name of the tree? I will show you that that tree killed someone. The same tree. Amen? So I speak to trees to squeeze a wicked. Oh my God. By the way, these things that we are, I'm teaching you, Sangoma has went ahead of us. Amen? The Bible says the children of the world are graver than the children of the kingdom. Amen? Esangoma, that's why the devil has been using trees to destroy people. There is no charm without a tree. Amen? There is a certain tree that when you cut it, it releases, uh, it, it cries. They like to use that to kill people. Amen? As this tree is crying, so this, people, this family must cry. They prepare a charm, and it will work because of the power of enchantment. The, the, the difference that they use enchantments. And you don't do enchantments, you. You must speak in tongues and dance in your house. Speak in tongues. That's a spiritual enchantment. A sangoma, before they do something, they be boo, 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 doing enchantments. And you don't do enchantments. You must speak in tongues in your car, begin to Sing in tongues. Amen? So, then Abraham planted a tamarisk tree in Beresheba. Now, Beresheba, if you check Beresheba, it's the same place. Now, it was, a, it, was a, it was part of the land of Canaan, but uh, what was promised to Abraham, but at that time, there were Philistines in the land. Amen? And the Bible says that Abraham dug the wells of water. He has so many wells of water. I'm asking someone here. And when Isaac came, 
he was in the same area. And the Philistines began to cover all the wells which Abraham dug. And they began to fight. He fought with, a, they began to fight with Isaac. Amen. But listen to this. It's the tree that Abraham planted that was fighting for Isaac. The, 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 the prophetic tree I do is more than the bottle. Because it will fight for the future generation. Oh, am I talking to someone here? Eh? Ah, yeah, yeah. Go to uh, 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 Genesis uh, 26. Let me show you something. Genesis 26. You people, if you understand the prophetic stuff, your life will never be the same. Amen? Okay, go to Genesis 26. Let's begin from uh, verse 1. The Bible says that there was a famine in the land beside the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went to Abimelech, king of Philistines, to Gera. Then the Lord appeared to, 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 appeared to him and said, Do not go down to Egypt. Live in the land which I shall tell you. The land that they, they, they were Philistines, that land. Dwell in this land. I will, I will be with you and bless you. For your descendants, for to you and your descendants, I give all these lands. Now, that is the promise now of that land where he was. But remember who was there before? Abraham. And he planted what? A tree. Amen? And the tree that we use for deliverance, I call it die hard. It's what? You see, that tree, you cannot, even if you don't put water, it will not die easily. Say, I will not die easily. Hey, my God. Because the Bible said you are a tree. The Bible says you are like an olive tree planted in the house of God. Tree, tree has so many meaning. Amen? Now continue, continue. Now he was in the same land. Uh -huh. Continue. Verse what? Verse 4. And I will make your descendants multiply as the stars of heaven. I will give to you, at your descendants, all these lands. And in your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. Amen? Because Abraham obeyed my voice. Listen to me, man. If you are, if you are sitting next to a man, say, he's talking to you. You see, how you live in this world, your children can be blessed because of how you obey God. Amen? If you don't obey God, there's what we call blessings that you inherit. You haven't done anything, but because of what your father did, you can live a good life. There was a time when God wanted to squeeze Solomon, but God said, because of your father, David, I will not squeeze you now. I will squeeze your generation. But the man said, you hear that? Amen? Sometimes we don't just live for ourselves. We are living for our children and the children to come. Amen? And our grandchildren. Now, then you will discover that uh, Abraham, uh, uh, the Philistines were now covering all the wells of water which the father Abraham you go to verse uh, verse uh, 17. Okay, verse 18. And Isaac dug again the wells of water which they had dug in the days of Abraham, his father. For the Philistines had stopped them. Up after the death of Abraham, he called by the names which his father had called them. Also Isaac's servants dug in the valley and found a well, a, a well of running water. Water is blessing. It represents blessing. But the headsman of Gera quarreled with Isaac's headsman saying, The water is ours. So he called the name of the, of the well Isaac because they quarreled with him. Verse 21. Then they dug another well and they quarreled over that. So you see, oh my God, the blessing of Abraham, the devil will fight it. You are, you are supposed to be blessed with Abraham. 
But Abraham, but the devil will not allow you to just get the blessing. Go to Galatians, Galatians chapter 5. Uh, sorry, Galatians chapter 3, verse, uh, verse 7. Let me show you something. Amen? Your stream is from Abraham. The Bible says, therefore, know that only those who are of faith are the sons of who? Abraham. Who is your father? Abraham. And verse 9. Go to verse 9. So then those who are of faith are blessed with believing Abraham. You are blessed with who? So, but the devil will not just bring your blessings. He will not allow you to have your blessings. He will begin to fight. That's why we must stand and pray. I'm asking you someone here. Everything. The problem with many Christians, you sleep a lot, you don't pray. It's a fight. Our Christian walk is a fight. I, I, I went to Gabon. The first trip I went to Gabon, because the place where, you know, the, 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 the shore of Gabon, it's a dangerous place. It's like Bermuda Triangle. It's like the Devil Sea in Japan. There are about 12 places that are dangerous in the world because there are entrances to hell. People who die in Africa, most of them, they use their spirits. They use that entrance. Amen? If there's another scene in Japan, you can go and study it. It's called the Devil's Triangle. Or, or, or the Devil's Sea in Japan. It's another entrance going to hell. People who die in Asia, they use that entrance. And that's why Jesus said, the gates of hell shall not prevail against you. And in those areas, there are demonic activities. The first time I went to Gabon, the devil hit a plane. Amen? The devil wanted me to die in that place. Just check it, you discover that the whole Zambian team, national team, died, perished there. Am I talking to someone here? Only Kalusha Buaya, because he flew from, from, from Europe, going to play soccer there. But the ones who came from Zambia, all of them died. Just 50 meters, 500 meters from the from the land. Amen? That's why I tell you, when I'm traveling, you must pray for me. How many of you prayed for me? You see? Others will just say, I receive, I receive. When I announce, when you check on my Facebook that I'm traveling, you must pray. I fight with de big devils. And I've been telling you people that what I do here, you know, my calling is not to have a church. Do, do you understand? We have a church here because some people demand that we should be ministering to them. My calling is not to have a church and uh, I've got, I know my assignment. Amen? We are about 7,000 there. And we, I, 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 I ordained 300 pastors. Amen? Oh, I might even see someone. So when I, that's why we want the partners that you should stand with us. And I, I told them I'm raising partners only ten dollars a month, which is hundred something. Amen. And you partner with me. Am I talking to someone? That is, if you are blessed with my teachings here. If you are not, then don't. We are not forcing anyone. Amen. Because if you cannot do what God has asked you to do, God will use other people. Am I talking to someone? Now, listen to this. Now, this trip, when we were about to land, I saw that the pilot was just flying. He was not landing. He was just flying over that dangerous place. I said, this is the devil. The devil, also, the devil is cooking, has cooked something against me. So you, 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 you go around, you see that I've seen this place around for one hour. Then the, the captain announced, he said, sorry, we are not landing because there is a problem. They have closed the runway at Libra Airport. I said, God, what is this? Amen? I began to fight. Now everyone was quiet in the plane because, number one, in Gabon, there's a military government. So in the military government, you think that maybe something has happened now. Amen? So me, what I didn't like is to fly over that place for a long time. But thank God, as we are flying, I saw a rainbow. After prayer, I saw a rainbow. A rainbow is a sign. 
so that I'm in a covenant with you. Ah, am I speaking with someone here? Oh, yeah. Amen. Yeah. After that, I began to speak in tongues. I said, I will not die here. I shall live in the name of Jesus. You devil, I rebuke you. What I'm trying to tell you is that our life is a life of fight. Yeah. When you relax, you, are, you become a casualty. So after that, he announced, okay, okay, we cannot land, so we are going to land in Congo, Prasafi. But it's the same area. So we flew for an hour. When we were about to land in Congo, he said, now the, airspace, the, the, the runway is open. We should go back and fly. So we flew over that area for like two hours. I said, hey, my God. And when we landed, we discovered that there was a plane that crashed before us. Amen? So you sleep. The devil will squeeze you. I like what Jesus said. He said, he said even, even when things are fine, I just start the devil. That we should, I, I want to exercise my faith. Amen. Amen? You don't pray once in a while. You live a life of prayer. So, if you begin to relax, you don't get your blessing. You confess. Jacob, he said, I will not leave you until you do what? You bless me. He was fighting with that angel. And then he broke his leg. He said, yeah, you have broken my leg, but I will not leave you. Amen? And then an angel said, what is your name? Amen? He said, my name is Jacob. I said, from where? From today, your name will be called Israel. Because you have wrestled with God. You have fought with God. Your blessings will not just come without a fight. That's why you must confess. I'm blessed and highly favored. We teach you the word of God here. We deliver you. Some of you just go. The same problems will come. Will come because you don't take your part. Deliverance has you have a part to play. The Bible says submit to God and resist who? The devil and he shall free from you. Who is supposed to resist the devil? Is a prophet or, or, or terminator. You. Amen. You must resist the devil. And he shall what? He shall flee from you. Oh my God. Praise God. Now let's go to Exodus chapter 4 verse 29. Two, uh, Exodus, two, uh, Exodus 4 verse 2. Quickly. And I'll read one more verse. And I'm going to pray for you. So the Lord said to him, who is that Moses? What is in your hand? Moses said what? A rod. A tree. Amen? And uh, by the way, that tree was using for what? For walking an ordinary tree. Amen? But if you check the story of Moses or the story of Israel, children of Israel, Moses used that tree throughout his life to attack the wicked. Amen? It was it's Moses, when, when he faced Pharaoh, God, God said, throw, what do you have in your hands? Throw it down. It turned into what? Snakes. Now, let me show you that the magicians also know how to use nature. They use nature for what? For evil. So the magicians said, oh, we can also do that. They had their roads. It turned into what? They turned into what? Snakes. But the road of Moses swallowed the roads of magicians. This is what I wanted to talk to you today, that the, the rod of Moses is going to swallow the charms of the magician. Amen. Amen. Don't fear charms. Amen. Ah, you have a powerful God. Amen. Because this God is a God of uh, idols. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 17. Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 17. Look what your neighbor and say, fear not. Amen? Once you begin to operate in fear, faith doesn't work. Amen? The Bible says, for the Lord your God is God, is God of what? Gods. And the laws of laws. The great God, mighty and awesome, who shows no partiality, no takes bribe. When you come to God, you don't ask you, are you a Tosa or a Zulu? Africa, we have a big problem because of tribalism. <laughs> Amen? But God does not show partiality. If you are a Sutu, you greet a Zulu, 
in Zulu, normally he answers you. In Sutu, normally he answers you in what? Amen? Because whether we like it, we have tribalism. Not only here in South Africa. The whole continent. Amen? And as long as we stick to this, we'll be divided. I was, uh, I was in Rwanda. I spent a night in Rwanda, in Kigali. And I think I've been teaching you that Kigali, Rwanda, is the success story of Africa. You'll be proud that you're an African. And my prayer is that the whole continent should be like that. Am I talking to someone? I talk to you and you talk to me. Amen? You understand? Now, one thing that Paul Kagame did, that's, that's the president of Paul. You know, in 1994, there was a genocide. About one million people died. They killed each other. The Hutus and the, the Susis. Okay? But what he did when he took over, he said, on your identity, we don't want you to put your tribe. So you just know each other that this one is a, suit, it's a, it's a Hutu, but there's no an identity you don't, you don't play. Because he wanted to bring reconciliation. Amen? And I don't care what people talk or say about it. You know, they said, no, he has been in power for a long time. Listen to me, saints. If a dictator is doing a good job, let him continue. But to have someone in four years that can bring another war. If you want to make a holiday, go to, now it's visa free. Go to Kigali. You, you, you will think that you are in Europe. The city is very beautiful. I was shocked at 11 o'clock at night. People were walking in the streets answering phones. I said, hey, in Johannesburg, hey, your God should help you. I'm telling you the truth. And the city is clean because I think once, is it once a month or twice a month, everyone has a job to clean the city. Amen? You can't just throw anything outside. I'm telling you, you can't just unite in any, any place. Africa, we need Africa like that. Amen? And we are, we can do that. Rwanda is a success story. Namibia, if you go to Swakop Mund, it's a success story. Amen? As we have no excuses because we inherited a beautiful country already. Am I talking to someone here? We have no what? What we must do is just to maintain the beautiful country we inherited. Amen? Say, I love my Africa. Uh, and African people are wonderful people, I'm telling you. Wherever you go, I was in Cameroon, I travel a lot. You know, <laughs> in Cameroon, no one will ask you papers. In many parts of Africa, no one will ask you, hey, where's your ID? No. <laughs> Once you enter, you're part of them. Amen? I asked the guy who was driving me from uh, Yaounde to Bamenda, six, a five hours drive. I said, so you mean because my ID is in there by person? He said, no, here, no one will ask you paper. But here we kill people. Just because they come from... Sense, let me tell you something. You see, I may differ with Julius and some other things, but on that one, I give him credit. He said, you must never, never kill someone because he comes from another country. You must never, never do that. Amen? Are you hearing this? Don't entertain that. Amen? So I said, you mean I will just... They said, no, you will hear... You will drive, no, no one will ask you. They can only ask you if you have committed something. Where is your, where is your ID? Because you have committed a crime. These borders, it's white people who put the borders. Amen? Am I talking to someone? Now, I'm not saying that people should just say enter without a proper permit. No, I'm not saying that. But don't allow the devil to use you to have hatred against other people. Africans, we are one. Amen? And what Julius Malema said, you know, it touched me. He said, Africans are rejected everywhere. You go to Europe, they are hated. You go to America, they are hated. And then we should begin to hate one another. 
That is not good. That was just a bonus. Amen? Chief, that is just a bonus. Amen? Now, let me show you something. So, all throughout the days of Moses, he used a rod. I'm teaching you the, the revelation of the tree. Amen? Because next week I want to have a prophetic tree service. Amen? We're going to bring trees here. I want everyone, if you don't have a tree in your house, let me, and I have sand from the ocean. Amen? I will take the tree and I will put sand. Why do I put sand? Go to Genesis 22, verse 17. I'm about to close. Genesis 22, verse 17. You are getting the teaching, say I'm getting the teaching. And I want someone to go and get a bottle because today I will break the bottle. Okay, verse 17. What does it say, verse 17? Let's read together. One, two, three, go. Blessing, I will bless you. And you multiplying, I will multiply you. You are descendants as the stars of the heaven and as the sand which is on the seashore. And your descendants shall possess the gate of the enemies. Amen? Amen. So we are supposed to possess the gates, the gates of our enemies. Oh, yeah. We are supposed to collect from our enemies. Amen? But there, there are two promises. They said your children will be like the stars of heaven. In other words, you must shine. By the way, we are, I've read the scripture that we are, we, all of us who are born again, you are the children of who? Abraham. So you, must, you are supposed to shine. You say, I must shine. Amen? Number two, it says, uh, your descendants shall be like the sand of the seashore. Amen? Now, what is a sand? What does it mean to be like a sand of the seashore? Go to the book of Jeremiah 5, verse 22. Jeremiah 5, verse 22. Amen? Jeremiah 5, If you cannot get the tree, I will bring the trees here. You can get it. Because that tree that I use... It's a different tree. Amen? It's difficult to find it. Now, go to Jeremiah. The, the Bible says in verse 5, 22, Do you not fear me, says the Lord? Will not you tremble at my presence? Who has placed the sand as a sea bound of the sea? Don't worry, I will help you to interpret. By a perpetual decree, God put a sand as a bound of the sea. By a what? Perpetual decree. That it cannot pass beyond it. And though its waves toss to and from, yet they, can, they cannot prevail. Though they roar, yet they cannot pass over it. Now, God, how God designed this earth, God said, I'm going to put sand on the seashore. So that the waters should not reach the land. We have a sea in, 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 in Vavis Bay, uh, sorry, in, 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 De in Deben, in Cape Town and other, other places. Yeah? We, we have the ocean. Amen? So what God did, he put a sand on the seashore. Amen? To stop the sand, uh, the waves, uh, the water, to reach us here. Am I communicating here? Amen. Amen? The Bible says that they can roar, they can scream. This is why I tell you that you are unstoppable. Because you are like the sand. Amen? Sand is a difference. Amen? That the devil can roar, can shout, can scream, but they will not prevail. Number two, Israel is like what? The sand. Nations will make noise. Israel will never be defeated. I'm telling you. Nations will become casualties. Not that land. Fighting with Israel, you are fighting with God. And where things, if you read my book there, my, my books, two books I wrote, where things are going, I put that in my book. I said, time will come when the United Nations will vote that Jerusalem is an international city. Now they talk about that, but they will send soldiers to fight. Because Israel will say, no, Jerusalem is a Jewish state. It's a Jewish city. It's like when you say that Paris does not be go, belong to, to Paris. You can't say Johannesburg does not belong to South Africa. Amen? 
Do you understand? Now, nations will rise up and will, there will be a resolution. Amen? And because, uh, and now, as I'm talking to now, I was, I was watching United Nations, they were discussing about what is happening there. Everyone attacking Israel, everyone attacking. But now, things will go beyond that. That's when nations will attack Jerusalem. Amen? They want to capture Jerusalem because they, will, they want to put Jerusalem as an international city. Amen? And the Lord himself will fight for his city. And all those armies, I'm talking to United Nations, will be defeated. That's what, that's what the Bible says. And the king himself will appear on the Mount of Olives. He will fight for his city. Amen? And the Jews who are not born again, because Jews until today, my God, they don't believe in Jesus who came. They are still waiting for the Messiah. Because, and you can't, you, you can't blame them, because in their mind, they know the prophets that the Messiah will come. But they did not know that the Messiah came. Amen? So what happened? They are waiting for the Messiah to come. Because in their mind, they were saying when the Messiah comes, he will be a political leader. And he will fight for us. And we will have peace. But he came as a baby to save the world. He didn't come for them. He came to save the whole world. And the Bible said God hides himself. So God hid himself. He came as a baby. But when he comes for the second time, he will come as a king of kings. So he will fight for his city. And he will defeat the armies of the United Nations. And then Jews who will be in the land of that time, they will, say, they will see him. The Bible says he will stand physically on the Mount of Olives. And the, the Jews will say, because, ha, ah, saints, the life of the Jews, the whole life is a life of supernatural. They have seen God. That's why I tell Christians, you cannot preach to a Jewish person. No, you're a small boy. They have seen God. They know God. That's why they don't fear. When there is war, they go to the wailing war, they cry, God, our God, you did this in the days of Abraham. God, fight for us. I'm asking someone here. You cannot preach to a Jewish person. So Jesus Christ will preach to them. Because when he stands on the Mount of Olives, he will stretch forth his hand. And they will see the mark. Those marks are still there. And they will ask him, what are the marks on your hands? He will say, I'm Jesus whom we rejected. And the whole nation shall be saved. I put those things in my books. Clap hands for the Lord. Amen? Now, let me give you the last one, and then we are done. Go to the book of uh, Exodus, Second uh, Samuel, chapter 18, verse 19. Amen? I wanted to close with this one. Now, this is the son of, uh, okay, then Ahimaaz, the son of Zadok, said, let, us, let, let me run now and take the news to the king how the Lord has avenged him of his enemies. That boy, the son of David, was the enemy of the king. Why? Because he rebelled against the king. Amen? This boy was wicked. Chief, this boy was very wicked. He was sleeping with his father's concubine in the tent in the afternoon. And people watching, hey, Abisulam, Abisulam, sleeping with your father's wives. And he rebelled against the king. And the Bible says that rebellion is like the sin of what? Witchcraft. When you rebel, you are a witch. So let's, let's see what squeeze a witch. Continue. Verse, 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 uh, the next verse. It's verse what? And Joab said to him, you shall not take the news this day. For you shall take the news another day. But today you shall take no news because the king's son is dead. Continue. Then Joab said to the Cushite, go tell the king what you have seen. So the Cushite bowed himself to Joab and ran. Amen? Say a Cushite. Who is a Cushite? He's an African. An Ethiopian. <laughs> The one who was supposed to deliver a message was an African. Why? Because Africans, we know how to deliver a message 
with immaturity. Amen? When you go to deliver a message of death, you just say, hey, your son is dead. No, you, you go with a parable. But the white people, they just say, hey, your son is dead. Hey, hey. The person will collapse. Amen? Now continue. I want you to see it. Okay, now, then Job is, okay, and Ahimaaz, the son of Zadok, said again, I want you to get, is it back or because of time? Where, okay, where, uh, a, a, a tree, he hanged himself with a tree. While I'm reading this one, just find that one. It's the same chapter. I won't, I don't, I won't, I don't waste time. And Ahimaaz, the son of Zadok, said again to Joab, but whatever happens, please let me also run after the Cushite. So Joab said, why will you run, my, my son, since you have no news ready? You have no news for the Cushite. Say, a black man has a message. Deliverance, I tell white people, deliverance, leave it to us. Amen? You can teach us about Greeks and what, what, Greek and the Hebrew, but deliverance, leave it to us. Uh-huh, continue. And put that one, what it says, uh, he died. Uh, and someone go pick the piece. I don't waste time. I want that that one. Continue. Uh, go to verse 24. Verse 24. Okay, verse 25. Okay. Now where it says uh, Abyssalam was uh, hanging on a tree. And someone go, it's the same, same chapter. Let me just check myself because we're in time. Okay, second Samuel. Where it says uh, uh, Abyssalam was hanging on the, on the tree. Can someone go quickly? Amen. Are you getting something here? Are you learning? Phone. And these people don't have phone. Start on your feet. Start on your feet. Go verse uh, verse what? Verse ten. Verse ten. The Bible says in verse ten. It, it, it verse ten. Can you try to put verse ten? Okay. Now a certain man saw it and told Joab, said, "I just saw Abyssalam hanging in a terrible tree." He was hanging because he was what? He was a witch. Amen? We, the Bible says the burial is like the sin of witchcraft. So let the witch die to what? A tree. Amen? So next week I will, go, I will speak to a tree to go and speak to your enemies. Amen? This is very, very important. It's a revelation from heaven. This revelation came when I was in Jericho. I was sitting down in Jericho. God began to reveal to me about trees. Amen? I'm asking you someone here. And the Bible says that there was a war in Israel. The Bible said those who died with a tree, there were many than those who died with a what? A sword. Amen? We want your life to change. You must fight battles for your children's children. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Amen. 
What's this? Can I get the tree? Get the tree. Get the tree. Get the tree. Tree. Amen. This is a tree that I use. Amen. It has arrows. This tree, even if you touch it by mistake, it will, it will prick you. Amen? Very dangerous. And it's amazing that people of the world, they understand this thing. This tree, I remember I went to buy it somewhere. I said, hey, that tree is dangerous. They say when you have that tree, the witches cannot fly. The Sangomas use this tree. Can you see that? Sangomas are ahead of us. I'm going to speak to this tree. Moses, all throughout his ministry, what was he using? When he, that one day he was crying, the children, not, not him, the children of Israel was, were crying. They saw Red Sea there, and they saw the children of uh, the, the army of Pharaoh. God said, "What do you have in your hand? Why? Why are they crying to me? Why are you crying to me?" They have what? Just hit the water. The water was divine. A tree. And you check in the Bible. I will show you next week. In the Bible, when God wants to squeeze the wicked, God doesn't use anything special. He uses nature. He uses what? Nature. I will show you next week. Amen? So I'm preparing you next week. If you don't have a tree, we'll bring some trees here. Just bring your money. Because it's difficult to find this one. This one grows normally in the bush. And you don't take a, a, someone like this one. No, I won't take a grape like this one. Someone brought a, a what? Aloe vera tree. I want this one with sharp, sharp arrows. I will speak to it. A wicked man will just die of heart attack. Amen? And I will take the sand. Now you understand the teaching, yeah? I mentioned about the sand. I will put the sand. You plant this tree on your, in your compound. Hey! Amen. And God gave me a verse for this one. Psalms 45, verse 5. Psalms 45, verse 5. The last one. So I will speak to this tree to go and swallow the charms. Amen. Your arrows are sharp in the hearts of king's enemies. The peoples fall under you. These things will, will prick them. Amen? I have this tree on my hand. No witch can fly in my place. Amen? You will die there. Amen? Say, Father, Father in, the in the name of Jesus, I submit to you. I, submit to you. I don't worship idols. I, don't worship idols. I, worship I worship the true God. The God of Israel. Father, if I have objects of idols in my house, I will destroy them. In the name of Jesus. I believe in the God of Israel and the God of Terminator. Amen. And uh, next week, I will show you from the Bible that the devil targets, when they, are, when they are doing their charms, rituals, when they are worshipping idols, they like to do those things under green trees. They do that, that on the ocean. People go, people are initiated in the ocean. Big men, they go naked. Women, in the ocean to be initiated. They go to the high hills, the high mountain. Because the devil loves nature. Because he knows that nature has power. Amen? Praise God. Lift up your hands. I speak to you three in the name of Jesus Christ. As Moses used a rod to perform miracles, I send you to their houses to swallow the charms. I send you to their houses to attack the wicked. The arrows of God 
are sharp in the hearts of the enemies of a king. And let people fall under them. In the name of Jesus Christ. People fall under you. People fall under the tree. In Jesus name. I speak to you tree. Understand the prophetic language. Because the, the rod of Moses understood the prophetic language. The tree on the cross understood the prophetic language. I send you to go and squeeze the wicked. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 It is done. And every day from uh, this day to uh, elections, we'll, we'll be praying. We're going to pray for election. Amen. Lift up your hands. I want a few South Africans, ladies, go and touch the, the South African flag there. The devil wants blood and we don't want blood. Amen. The blood of Jesus is enough. Amen. So we're going to pray for elections. We want a peaceful election. Go and, and hold the, the flag. Just, just touch your, the flag. And when you are praying during the week, every day, remember to pray. These elections will be different. Amen. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for our beautiful South Africa. We pray that God, there will be peaceful elections. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, we attack the plans of the devil. We destroy his plans. Father, we want a peaceful election. No blood shed. The devil will not drink the blood of our children, the blood of our fathers. The blood of our people, we paralyze. I will pray. I will pray. I will pray. Oh, I will pray. If I don't pray, rest the I will pray. I will pray. Shut the robot. If I do boy, you can pray. Oh. If Pastor Chris can pray, who oh, am I not to pray? I will pray. I will pray. I will pray. Oh, I will pray. If I do In Jesus' pray. name. Amen. If you love South Africa like I do, let's continue to pray until election. We did that in 1990 to 1994. We prayed. The devil wanted to kill millions. But we stopped that through prayers. Amen? Praise God. Can you open the, uh, off the line? Uh, can you, I want you to, or viewers, to know we want to pray for you. Amen? Stretch forth your hands to the viewers. People watch this program from everywhere. Begin to pray for them that God should bless them. We speak blessings over your life. We speak protection over your lives. In the name of Jesus Christ, I bless you. I decree that you are blessed. In the name of Jesus, you are lifted in a country where you are. My God will favor you in that land. My God will bless you in that land. 
as uh, Isaac was blessed in the land of the Philistines, he began to prosper until he became very prosperous. May you be rich in your country in the name of Jesus Christ. May you prosper in America, in China, in Australia, in the land where you are. May God grant you favor in Jesus' name. Amen. Viewers, before you go, uh, God minister to me that I should raise uh, more than 1,000 partners who will be partner with me with $10 every month. Amen? And there will be benefits. You have my number. You can call me. I'll give you my direct number. Anytime you have a problem, you call me. I'll pray for you. If I don't pick your phone, you can just send a message. Because God has given me an assignment to touch nations. And uh, I need your help. If you are blessed with my ministry, $10 or above, thank you. Some of you have already started, and I want to appreciate you for that. I've got an assignment to touch nations, to deliver nations from the powers of darkness. Shalom. God bless you. Amen. Amen.